as a writer you've you've written on bharat in various ways in various contexts uh prolifically in the political context but something that i find personally very interesting is your commentary on sarees and textiles so with your uh, you know with, with your interest in this mm-hmm. area in in the sarees and different traditions of india how do you see that how do you see the essence of the civilization getting reflected in in those things in the textile in the fabrics in the way people you know dress up okay it's a very interesting question actually um, people like sonal ji and uh, madhu ji have spoken so much about our civilizational ethos and i am nowhere uh, let me repeat i am nowhere as learned or as accomplished as they are your humility is very indian <laughs> <laughs> so i am go- what i am i am a traveler and i am a storyteller so i am going to tell you stories about my travels in india and where i have discovered the civilizational ethos everything that they've spoken about is something that i've experienced and let me share a couple of incidents with you one i was in bhojpur in near bhopal there is a temple there which has been uh, renovated uh, not renovated um, how would i say jirnodhar kiya hai purana temple hai i was taking pictures and it was in the afternoon it was summer it was really really hot and i had a bottle of water with me uh, i don't use i don't buy bottled water i take a bottle with me and i fill it with water wherever i go so my bottled water or bottle of water was there and i was taking pictures and there were other people also at the temple and there was a little girl and she was really thirsty so she saw this bottle of water and she ran to the bottle of my bottle of water and she opened it her mom promptly said beta hath mat lagana apna pani nahi hai and there was this old man from the village who was showing me uh, the temple around really old guy maybe 70 or something like that so instinctively even before i could say anything not really old hello <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, that was a four pass. <laughs> young at heart, man. Young man. So what he said, even before I could say anything, he said, "Ah, ye ab kya keh rahi hai? Beta, pani to pani hota hai, apna ya paraya nahi hota." And that to me was this profound statement which talked about everything that is Indian. And he said it so naturally, so impulsively that beta pani to pani hota hai, apna ya paraya nahi hota. पहले आप even 15 years ago when we didn't have this proliferation of bottled water you could go to any place in india and people with the first thing people would offer to you even before you asked for it was water and some good or some singdana or something like that that was instinctive even now if you go to rural india the first thing they'll offer to you even before you ask for it is water so that is one incident the second incident i would and like to show pyao lagana pani pilana is one of the most basic dharmic duties, uh, duties yes. that a person is absolutely the second story is very interesting i was traveling in pune and there was this auto driver he was a muslim and there was morning and uh, he was like he just washed his rickshaw and i was the first passenger to get it so he said bethi hai ma'am and i sat down and what he did was before he started the rickshaw he actually did like this to the steering wheel and it was obvious that uh, he had written islamic whatever stickers and all that so i found it um, not strange but you know i found I, i really liked it so i asked him ki aapne aise kiya this is something that you see hindus do every day so he says ha main riksha ki pooja karta hu use the word pooja and he said aap bhi to karte ho aap usko lakshmi bolte ho hum usko barkat bolte hain this is something that i remember now classically in orthodox islam what he is saying is co- probably considered heretical but for him it was just a way of life because that's a civilizational ethos that he was talking about that is bharat and the third example that i would like to give is something that sonal ji has already spoken about kolam my uh, i'm married to a tamilian so my grandmother in law she draws really beautiful columns on every occasion and when she was trying to teach me and i was nowhere half as good as she was and i was getting frustrated that i was not getting the line correct and she by the time had made an incredibly intricate something incredibly beautiful so i was like i can't do this she was like patience you will not you will never do it in one day you will have to keep learning about it and then what happened was she made something very beautiful she made the dot rangoli without referring to a book without referring to anything from her mind and within literally 5 minutes somebody walked over it and it was you know tehsmeh so gaya 
So I asked her, don't you feel bad? You spent two and a half hours creating something so beautiful and in two minutes it's destroyed. She told me, Jab tak main bana rahi hoon kolam, tab tak mera hai. Jab ban gaya, it belongs to the wow. universe. Bahut ko. So this feeling of detachment, ki main hoon sab mein, fir bhi nahi hoon, mm. is another Indian thing. That is what even uh, Sonil ji and Madhu ji have talked about. He asked me about textiles. What I find fascinating about Indian textiles is this is an unbroken tradition. What I'm wearing now is a Odisha. is a Odisha Sambalpuri cotton sari. I mean silk sari. This also has the jyoti, the rangoli patterns in it. There is a pattern called the Pasapalli checks, which is like the chessboard checks, which you can see the exact same pattern on the attire of the Padmapani Buddha in Ajanta, which is like third century CE. It's the exact same pattern. That is the spiritual tradition of textiles that we are coming from. Even now, if you go and meet weavers, the before they start their work, they'll first do the puja of the loom because for them, the loom is the Lakshmi. The motifs are all, they are either drawn from nature, they are drawn from architecture, they are drawn from our uh, uh, religious iconography and it's also interconnected. So every time I wear a ha hand woven weave, Sonalji knows, she is a connoisseur of uh, Indian textiles. Every time you wear something that is incredibly beautiful and woven by hand, you are being connected to a tradition, to a long tradition. It's like being a part of Ganga, ever flowing, ever uh, moving, ever dynamic, yet never changing civilizational cycle, which to me is the real essence of what is Bharat. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad, Namaskar.